Shara Bianca, the vision midwife, and welcome to the birthing chair with our special guest, Miss Roxy Hart. So listen, y'all, y'all have seen us posting, we've been talking, she has on a shirt. Saturday is the third, third annual Central Florida Black Business Expo. And so we have her here today to talk about birthing her vision because she's pushed to birth her vision. Say I'm pushing. I'm pushing. There you go. So Roxy, tell us about you before we get into the Black Business Expo and all of that good stuff. Tell us about you. I'm from Jacksonville, Florida. Duval. <laughs> um, I've always been about giving back to the community and I, I do... Um, potentially just give that to everybody that's been in my life from when I was in activities when I was young I had coach um I love you coach Cassell we still call her coach <laughs> yeah she's still my coach um but um we used to do activities other than um practice we used to go out in the community and I remember at a young age I think I was in 10th grade she had us cheering for a potential politician while oh. they were running. Like a wheelchair? Yes, Girl, we created right. a wheelchair. I need wheelchair. to give me a group of cheerleaders. Come on, go, oh, yes. I love that. Okay. Yes. Y'all stay to. tuned because she going to have her some lead. <laughs> yes. I'm going to have me some cheerleaders. Go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. On. Yes. So, you know, I've always been about giving back. Um, I remember when I was in high school, just a lot of activities that I did outside of um, me cheering or playing tennis. It was all about giving back. And I love that about people in general that it doesn't matter who we are or where we're coming from we always want to oh, give back to somebody you know i could with her oh, yeah. shout out to them targets that was chilly that we're gonna leave that long we ain't got to go there but we used to chill together <laughs> um so you moved to orlando and said what we need to start a black business expo like how do we even get to this point that is not what happened okay <laughs> i moved here um, in 2009, after I graduated from William and Rains High School. Girl, I know I got some friends up there. They're cheering up right now. Right now, literally. <laughs> um, but I came here for school. I was a theater major. Um, and the reason the expo came apart, I mean, about is I've always did events without knowing it. Oh. I was always the person that was a part of a group that hosts parties. Mm -hmm. I was a part of a group called YT, Young and Thuggin'. Don't judge us. But Listen yes. for the Young and Thuggin'. <laughs> <laughs> but we used to host so many parties around the campus. Parties, the parties. <laughs> um, around um, UCF area, Valencia area. Um, when I got out of that, um, you know, we all grew up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> out of college. Um, I still started hosting little small community events for the LGBT, LGBT community because I realized that they were voices that weren't heard and a lot of LGBT people are not party goers. Right. Um, so I hosted an event called Spring on the Fun. We had oh. a food truck, um, we had games, bounce houses, mm -hmm. and everyone was able to come to the park, bring their friends bring their family, and we just had a good time as people. Right, right. Um, so I really did enjoy that. How the expo came about is when everybody was like, I'm protesting. I'm not purchasing from Walmart, Target. Which they still doing. Yes. <laughs> and everyone was making all these posts like, who can I go to for soap? Who can mm -hmm. I go to for clothes? Everyone was trying to alter where they buy items but they didn't know who I'm like y'all do know black businesses exist right like you can probably go next door and somebody right. will be able to give you <laughs> right. something okay. so um that's where the black business came about I said you know what I'm gonna put together yes a she small is event. you're awesome yes you are thank you yes. <laughs> I put together a small event you remember it was in a I remember <laughs> let's talk about that first event since we go in there go ahead yes. and talk about it where was it it was in a black owned barbershop it was extremely small but it was cutting hair at the same time but hair. I liked the vibe it was yes. cool yes I, I did not want the owner to stop his business that's right. one thing I said if we're both trying to get back to the community and you're a black owned business I don't want you to stop 
your business right. so I can host an event. Right. You're a black owned business anyway, and I'm having a black business expo. It just made sense to me. Right, right. But I didn't expect that many people to show up. <laughs> so it was, it was packed. So people couldn't get in the door. Um, and it was, I can't say it was overwhelming for me because it was my first event and I didn't expect that. It was a good event. It was good for your first (laughs) event. The location, I thought, I honestly, I thought having it in a barbershop was different. Yes. It was very different. Um, and I I like the fact that you, you stepped outside of the box. Um, so after that first event, you said, come on, let's do another one or what? Actually, Miss Kimberly Stewart talked me into doing the second annual. Hold on, we got to shout out Kim. So, Kimberly Stewart is Orlando's money lady, honey. She going to help you get your coins in order. She order. So, y'all look her up. She good folk. Good and folk. she's very down to earth, and she will keep it real. 100%. <laughs> but Ask about them go Go ahead. Yeah. Miss <laughs> <laughs> <Yes, but laughs> Ms. Kimberly came out to speak um, to the event. And after the event, she pulled me to the side. And at this point, I was like, this was stressful. I'm not doing it. I'm like, I can't believe I I pulled this off. And she pulled me to the side. And I'll never forget these words that she said to me. She said, I see your vision. And I want you to keep pushing. Do not give up on this. She was like, you're very young. And for you to try and pull off something like this is amazing to me. Absolutely. So I wasn't going to tell your age. But since you brought it up. (laughs) I, it's important that people understand when we say very young, Roxy, how old are you? Um, I am 26. 26! Let me say that on the make. 26, people! She is 26 years old and has put together three years in a row the very first black business as well here in Central Florida. That is absolutely amazing. Yes. Um, amazing, right? Yes. Talk about, um, I saw you post today and you said something to the effect of, After your first one, you were discouraged. What happened that discouraged you? So, I had reached out to Groupon to see if I could get the event on there, which I'm extremely grateful for that they were able to put it on Groupon because I was able to reach people that I wasn't able to reach because, of course, I'm from Jacksonville that moved to Orlando. So, I didn't really have, you know, the following to get people in the building and a person, a couple of people actually, I think it was two reviews, they were negative. Um, They said that it was unprofessional, Mm. it was packed, and um, that they will never come back or show support to an event um, brought to, I mean brought by me of course. And I was kind of discouraged because I was like, you know, I'm doing this for the community. Oh, and they also didn't like that it was in a barbershop and people were still coming. Oh, okay. So now we go. I'm going to put you on hold right here because now I got to go off a little bit. So first of all, you got that. First of all, <laughs> let's talk about how we as other black people need to support our own. Like, okay, listen, I, I understand customer service. I understand all of that. And I understand that it is not our job to make sure your, your event goes off without a hitch. Right. But I just feel like... If they had, if there was some concerns, instead of posting it on Groupon, they should have gave me you. And that's just my personal thing. I think one of the problems I have is we we talk about places like Walmart. Like we hate Walmart. I I am not an avid fan of Walmart. I just I hate having to go in there, which I'm going in there after I leave here. But the point is, I still go. I will talk trash in a line. I'm gonna talk trash in the parking lot. I'm gonna post about them on Facebook. But I still go. So why is it whenever we encounter something with another black business, all of a sudden it's a problem? We shutting it down. It was unprofessional. I didn't like this. I didn't like that. Instead of reaching out to the person and saying, "Listen, sis, I see what you're trying to do, but next year you might want to think about doing it this way." Right. right? And that's just my tidbit. That's my tangent. It irks my nerves when people say that's why I don't support black owned businesses. But you support the Walmart and the McDonald's with the cold fries. But okay, moving on. And I want to say I do grow from feedback. Right. Because every year, the feedback that I get from vendors, I actually apply to the next year. Right, right. So I want to say that. Keep giving me feedback. That's how I grow. That's how we all grow. If you are a business owner or a visionary and you see somebody else doing something and you you, you have an idea or you want to be able to help them, just tell the person, y'all ain't got to post it all on the reviews about how bad it was and you ain't coming back. Because they're going to be back. I promise they're coming back this year anyway. But go ahead on. <laughs> so um, when I, once I received that, that review from Groupon, I was like, 
I'm doing this for the community. I'm, I'm, I thought it was, it was a black owned event. It was a black business barbershop. And I didn't expect that many people to show up. Only, I want to say only 10 people had registered really. Um, and I had about 10, 15 vendors. So I was estimating about 45 people because I'm thinking the vendors, friends and family would want to come out and show support and things like that. So I didn't expect expect that volume. Right. That's why it's always good for you to purchase your tickets online. Let's talk about that for a minute. <laughs> what is it with the FYI? <laughs> Listen, people, if you see somebody putting on an event, this is not like the club where you got to see who going. It is a business expo. It is a networking opportunity. Why are you waiting to purchase your ticket for something like that that's going to allow you to be able to network? I can see if it was the club. Because you right. might be like, if I ain't going, then you ain't going. Right. But it's a business. It's a, you understand what I'm saying? So it doesn't make sense. So here's part of the issue. is because you undersell tickets. Right. You're not sure if you have enough space. And then a million folks show up and stand outside the door. And now they want to talk about how small the venue is. Well, you didn't register online like you should have. <laughs> Go ahead on. Yeah, that is what, that's one problem with hosting events that a lot of people, I used to be the same way. I would rather pay at the door in cash. Really? Mm -hmm. But I, now that I plan events, I'm like, I want to register online. Right. And you also get additional perks when you register online. Like? You may get a gift bag. You may be entered in a raffle. You may win money. Because all of those things we're doing, if you purchase online, you will be entered into a raffle to win a $25 gift card Saturday. Correct? Yep. All right. $25 in a gift card that you can use outside of the expo. Right. And you only pay like... The tickets are only ten dollars. Only ten dollars. Yes, only ten dollars. So, if you maybe come to the event and you're standing and you didn't pay, pay online, that may be why. Let me do this. I wish y'all would say something. <laughs> didn't get your ticket on advance, and now you come in here, you're talking trash. This time I talk to you the whole evening. You know with that attitude. No sense. She's not gonna do that. She's gonna be in her. I actually, chair. I'm gonna be on my best best behavior. I do have the birthday chair set up for y'all to sit down. But I'm just saying, don't not do what you need to do and then coming there talking trash because it ain't the way you want it to be. That don't make no sense. But okay. Also, so show support if you if you're coming to a, a, a event and you know they have vendors, expect to pay money. Expect to purchase items. Purchase from the vendors because people have things to sell. Right. So don't just come to network. Actually, show support. To right. You. The vendors, you may not like all the products, even if it's to be on their um, email list or something like that. You still want to be involved with the vendors that actually came to, you know, support. Yeah. Um, so utilizing your resources. So you said Kim kind of helped you get there. Yes. And then who else? What, what are some other things that you did to kind of cultivate and get this thing off the ground for the following year? Well... I want to say the the next year, the second annual um, business expo. When once I sent a survey out to my vendors, I kind of got their headspace on what they would expect to okay. come back. Good, good. We do have vendors that actually who came. I have vendors that have been there three years in a row, um, two years in a row, and every time I send them out a survey to get their feedback. So the second annual, I was like, you know what? I need a bigger space. Mm -hmm. Um, I also need someone to actually host it. That's how Mashara got involved. That host doing the most. Uh, <laughs> just because my, the first one, I was running around with yes. my head cut off. Everyone was calling me, and I wasn't able to navigate the expo like I wanted. Um, so I pulled Mashara in. Um, I got sponsors, um, which came out amazing. I love the fact that um, people who couldn't be involved, they still purchased the logo sponsors to be on the banner. Yeah. And that actually helped me pay for the venue. Right. It helped me um, pay for marketing. We were on the radio 94.5 for a week. Mm -hmm. um, little things like that right. helped. You know, oh, oh, build. Chanel said absolutely support. So, Chanel is one of our um, vendors who was donating for the raffle. Oh, so thank, thank you, you, Chanel. We really appreciate it. I'm coming to grab that tomorrow. Thank Selfie you. Selfie when I see you. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you know, I, I use a lot of um, inspiration as well. Um, I, Mama D, if anybody knows Miss Deidre Pittman, um, she's a, a part of the Credit Boutique mm -hmm. Tax Divas. Um, she let me have meetings. At her, nice. um, okay. at her office. Right, right. So yeah. I had a little um, com 
mini um, put together that can help me direct from other business owners because I do love mentoring right. um, for people to mentor me and for me to help me birth my purpose as mm -hmm. well. Because you can't do it alone. alone. And one of, I'm the type of person I would like to partner with multiple people. Absolutely. Absolutely. I don't want it just to be, oh, I want to be the first. No, I don't mind if you helped me or you gave me an idea. Trust and believe your logo gonna be on something, or I'm gonna tell Mashar to shout you out 50 million times, which I will because do because you helped me out. Right, right. So it, it's just little things that I've used in the past, and I learned from my mistakes to come up with the second annual. Absolutely. So how do you what 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 does success? How do you identify success for this event? For their Saturday? Yeah, for Saturday. Okay, so success for me is for everyone to support the actual vendors involved, um, purchasing items, and we also, while we're talking about vendors, every person will receive a punch card. Oh. So every time you purchase an item, a vendor can mark off that you purchased the item and you'll also be included in an additional raffle Boo. for Mashar to um, give you a great prize. Right. Um, you can also um, purchase additional raffle tickets, of course, but th those are extra perks that you can do if you are purchasing from the vendors. Yeah. I think it's important because we didn't talk about it at the beginning. So this year, and I think you might have done it last year, but I know this year you're doing something special with the proceeds, right? Yes. Okay, so what, what's going so on with that? So I am donating it to the Wells Built Museum and also Orlando Unity. Okay, now what's the or, uh, the Wells Built Museum? For those of you who don't know, it's what? Okay, so the Wells Built Museum is downtown and they're actually trying to expand. Mm -hmm. So um, they have a lot of history in there. Not just history, what kind of history? African American history. Central Florida black history is in there. Yes. So, I, I, this is how, what happened, how I got right. involved with them. I actually went on a date. My boyfriend took me there on a date because, you know, I'm all about, you know. So, <laughs> he took me there on a date, and when I walked in and I seen all this history mm -hmm. that I it had is no amazing. idea it's amazing. existed. Yeah. Like, I was like, oh, my gosh. He was like, yeah, you know, a lot of people don't, we don't really have a lot of traffic because we're trying to expand. And I said, actually, I can help you with that. Mm -hmm. I, can, I said, I am... Um, a coordinator of the Black Business Expo and I was talking to them and they were like, we would love for you to, you know, help us and things like that. Right. So I took, looked at my boyfriend, I said, this is gonna, this is what I want. I want right. I want to use them um, so I can give them a platform. Um, the, one of the historians is actually going to be on the panel yes, yes. to talk about Wells Built better than I can, of course. But I, I just fell in love with the atmosphere, the actual history. Yeah, I love that space. The too. doctor who birthed all of those babies mm -hmm. when no other doctor or physician was birthing us at that time. Right. It's amazing for them to still be trying to push his legacy. Mm -hmm. And his, did you know his house is still standing? Yes, I do. Well, you know, as, <clears throat> oh. as a Central Florida native, no. <laughs> But yeah, I, I am familiar with with the the, um, the house still being there. Yeah, uh -huh. that's. Yeah. I was like, they not yeah. knocking that down. Yeah, they said, no, "Oh, no. y'all like That's a part of history. Down. It's not going anywhere. Yeah, Absolutely. that's some. I think it's amazing. Yeah, I it is. Really Listen, it's stuff. some. It is an amazing. I went in there and enjoyed the space. I really wanted to do a party there, but that's another story. We'll talk about that off camera. Um, and then the other one you said, Orlando. Orlando Unity. Orlando Unity. Ms. Okay. Rita, Rena um, Peterson. So she came. How she got involved? Oh my God. How she got involved is she came to the event last year. She was like, oh, I love what you're doing. I want to meet with you. And a lot of people said that last year. You know, you get a lot of people that's in that, that mood when they see it. Again, because she's 26 <laughs> years old. <laughs> so um, a lot of people came up to me, but she was really adamant about being a part of um, the expo. And... Mama D, let me have a meeting again, you know. Shout out to Mama D. Mama D is the best. She is. I she love is. Her. She is. Um, she let me have a meeting at her office and she came and she had her little notebook all professional mm -hmm. and stuff and she introduced herself. And at the time, I didn't even know about her nonprofit. Right. Um, she was just letting me know like what I can do for next year and things like that because it was a community um, meeting in right. order to help me birth my vision, of mm -hmm. course. And then she, um, I was like, well, this year I want to give back to a nonprofit. I didn't have Wells Built in my head yet. 
Um, but she was like, well, I have a nonprofit. I'm not sure if it's what you're, you're, you're right. trying to do. I was like, so everybody in the room was like, okay, well, what do you do? And she pulled out this spreadsheet. And the spreadsheet had... Um, That's uh, actually our time. We're going to go a little longer, but go ahead on. <laughs> she had a map. And she was like, I just got approved from the city mm -hmm. to have this field turned into a flea market for small business owners. Okay. So, let me cut in because I know it's the one I'm rooting, right? Yes. So, for all of my um, Orlando people, or people who are familiar with Orlando, if you're going up Rootin Boulevard, right between the Smith Center and the Rib Man, <laughs> you got some good ribs. Shout out to the Rib Man. Right between the Smith Center and the Rib Man is a field, and you really can't tell it's back there because there's a bunch of woods in front of yeah. it. That is where she's going to have her flea market. Yep. So, it's amazing that it's going to be right in the middle of the black neighborhood yep and she's also partnered with a lot of other um people that can help small business owners grow i think she said they have meetings and um they have um little setups where if you're um a tax person retail stylist all that is going to be in this flea market where Small business owners can pay about like seventy five dollars a week to wow, rent. Wow! And I'm like, that's amazing for someone that's just starting off. That's your mama. Oh, that's my stepmom. Okay, like, she's <laughs> she like, raised me too. Like, that's your mama. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey. <laughs> yes, oh, I got half my personality from her. Talk about you, Yes. But yes. um, yes. Yeah, so when she was explaining this, I was like. So you do what I do, but you do gonna do it like on a daily basis, right? You right. know. So I was like, that would be a great partnership too. So right. People from my my expo, if you're interested, you're she, you're gonna meet her Saturday. Sign up with her if you're just starting off your business and you're not trying to have something like on a monthly basis. If you want to do it like every other weekend or something like that, and you don't want to spend like more than a hundred dollars a day or something to rent. Orlando Unity. So let's talk about this expo because I'm, I'm generally excited. Like I said, um, I've been <clears throat> my table is going to be the bomb.com because she's been in here with uh, spray paint and feathers for, <laughs> and fur. It's all over the house. But seriously, what what can we see? Who are we expecting to see at this expo on Saturday? Well, you're probably not going to see me as much because I'm going to be running around. <laughs> um, but we have Mr. Ken Bradshaw from Prudential. He's a financial expert. So he's going to be talking to us as a community on the purpose of community-based economics, um, supporting our, um, our black-owned businesses, how we grow as individuals and on a business level. Um, then we have eight cents in a jar. Um, I just saw that, literally, on Facebook. Yes, um, amazing. She's, Lachey is amazing. What she do is she goes to the youth. And speak to them about finance. Oh, nice. Okay. So she prepares them at a young age before they even get to adult level. I wish I had that. Right. Right. Um, so she teaches them like how to basically save, mm -hmm. financial aid, um, sponsorships, all of that. How they can grow as a young age. Okay. And then of course Miss Rena, and then the Wealth Built Museum, um, of course. And then um, we have Miss Janie Lacey. Mm -hmm. She was supposed to be a part of it last year. Also, said she had something come up last minute and she couldn't make it. So I reached out to her again this year, and she—I didn't even have to put the whole sentence out there. She has said yes before good, I finished good, typing. Good, yeah. But she is a mental health counselor, which oh. is what yeah. I think we need. We do. We're gonna in this yes, community. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. So one of the things that I do or that I'm doing is uh, monthly cocktails and conversations for ladies. Mm -hmm. And so one of the things we are gonna talk about is mental health in the black community yes. amongst women. So you all stay tuned for that because the flyer for that will be posted pretty soon because it's my, I think it's not my next one, the next one after that. Mm -hmm. um, so who, can you think off your head some of the vendors? I know we are gonna have food because you listen, food yes, is a big thing. we have food vendors this year. We do have food vendors, okay. Food trucks. Oh, we got trucks. I'm excited. I'm so right. excited about this food. I, so I we got food food. vendors. We're gonna see everything from what? Paparazzi, candles. We got some soap. We have um, a lipstick line Shut for the mouth. ladies. What? We have printing companies, shirts, mugs. We have limitless um, favors. They have um, 
the little homemade gifts. All right, coming all the way from Jacksonville, Florida. I think I have about two or three people coming from Jacksonville. Really? Um, Duval. Yeah. <laughs> Last year I had a couple of people come from Tampa, which I was surprised. Yeah, I remember them. I remember yeah. them. Yeah. Um, and then I have some people coming from Brandon, Florida. Um, so I, I'm not gonna cut you off, and I don't want to explode. But listen, if you got people coming from everywhere, what does that tell you? That I'm growing. That you're growing, <laughs> and and that what you're doing, there is a need for. People are willing to travel. And tutoring, yes. Yes, and right. tutoring, yes. Chief the tutor, that's what yes. I Um. And that people are willing to travel to come in and, and be a part of the event. Mm -hmm. This is a statewide thing, y'all. It's moving after three years. Yes. After three years. So how do you keep the faith through all of this? Honestly, Honestly. you guys. Vendors who keep pushing me, telling me to keep going. I do want to branch outside of expos as well. Because um, I feel like my purpose is to edu educate the community on multiple things that I feel like we lack. Okay. So if it's mental health, abuse, small businesses, that's what I feel like my purpose is for. Okay. So I want to yeah. make events that target that purpose. Absolutely. Um, so I don't mind growing on that type of level. But um, the expo will always be my baby. And I want to... I want to travel outside of Orlando as well. Mm -hmm. um, I, I have a connection for you in Jacksonville. I'll get y'all connected. Oh, perfect. Mm -hmm. I was you also um, looking at Atlanta. Mm. So my idea is for the vendors who are part of the Orlando area, we travel to Atlanta. Nice. And do one there. Yeah. Do are one they, there. Okay. Okay, cool. And that cool. way we can start branching off outside of our own communities. And they can start, you know, promoting outside of the city. Absolutely. And we could try to get a get one of those vans, buses. I'll be driving on the yeah. plane because I don't, I don't do road trips. I'll be on the plane. She no worries. Be on the road trip. Um, She's gonna be burning everybody <laughs> vision in the road from the plane directing. Um. So before we get ready to go, what is one vision vitamin that you would give to people who are starting a business, who have a vision, looking to birth it? What would you say? What's one thing you would say? I actually answered this question on one of the Empowerment Queens posts. Someone posted that same question. And I told her, find something you love and go to um, networking events in your community and start speaking to people that you're not accustomed to speaking to. Very nice. Stepping outside of your comfort zone. Mm -hmm. We say that all the time because we understand that in order to birth anything, it is very uncomfortable. Yes. You cannot remain the same and, and, and birth something that you want to birth, right? Right. All right. So before we go, now typically at this part of the segment, I give I give out my gift certificates. Not gift certificates, my vision certificates. The only reason I'm not doing it, Roxy, because Roxy has two already. She has two. I didn't think she would want a third one. If you do, I bring a tea Sarah. Don't you worry, because my paper done got better. I collect them. They're on my wall. I didn't really? Oh, that's so good. I have it. <laughs> yes. I also have the one from Orange County Black Voice, the yes. one that I won last year. Mm -hmm. I have that hanging up, too. So I've given her one each year, and I was like, I know this year. She's going to be like, listen, stop giving me these things. That's the only reason I didn't print it out. But before we go, I want you to yell through this, and I want you to say, I'm pushing. I'm pushing. <laughs> All right, so that concludes this episode of The Birthing Chair. Remember, you can catch me here every other Thursday. Uh, the next time we speak, we have Shantae, who does some work in the Paramore area. She will be our visionary nice. on the seat. Remember, on April 18th, I will be holding my first cocktails and conversation event, 3W, Women, Wine, and Words, 3 in 1 Cafe. The conversation is about relationships. For more information, you can visit MasharaBianca.com. Don't go there right now because I'm still working on the website. Or you can just inbox me on Facebook. If you want to catch the other episodes of The Birthing Chair, head on over to YouTube and at Mashara Bianca. That's it for this week. Take care, visionaries.